Habaragani, welcome to the International Civil Rights Center and Museum's first night of Kwanzaa 2022. We are launching our Kwanzaa lecture series this evening, and we have with us Reverend Wesley Morris. Reverend Wesley Morris is the senior pastor of Faith Community Church in Greensboro, North Carolina, which focuses on the dynamic relationship between spirituality and transformative justice. Also, he is a dedicated facilitator, counselor, community organizer, and internationally recognized leader who uses his speaking talents to inspire all who have the opportunity to hear his voice. His work for more than a decade with the beloved Community Center of Greensboro, home of the nation's first community truth and reconciliation process, uniquely positions him to guide those interested in intergenerational learning, historical archiving, and community organizing. Wesley is a graduate of North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University and Union Theological Seminary in New York City. His work with international travel projects in countries such as Cuba, Barbados, and Brazil have opened cultural and spiritual pathways for communities that would otherwise not have the opportunity or access to such rich experiences. Over the course of his career, he has continuously proven himself to be a catalyst for positive change in the community by helping people with diverse backgrounds embrace forgiveness and peace. When asked about his call to ministry and community organizing, Wesley states, I am here to drive strategic community building and influence transformative justice movements for all people. The International Civil Rights Center and Museum is proud to present on the very first night of Kwanzaa, Reverend Wesley Morris speaking on the principle of Umoja, unity. Greetings, I'm Wesley and I'm looking forward to our conversation tonight and I'm excited to be speaking to you on the word Umoja. Umoja, the first foundational principle of the Nguzu Saba, to strive for and maintain unity in the family, community, nation, and the race. I'm so glad, and before I go any further, I want to honor those that might be listening tonight. I want to honor you, especially the one who might be the oldest that is listening to us. It is part of my tradition to ask your permission to speak and so I won't call any names, but if you think you are the oldest one listening, I want you to raise your hand right where you are and give thanks as we give thanks for you. I want to also honor this moment by telling you that as we began, I felt a little nervous. I was nervous because I'm sharing on the word umoja, which means to strive for unity. But in this moment, I am speaking to you across a digital divide talking to you from a space where I can't see you, but I need to feel you. Part of what I want to share tonight is how we strive to stay in the spirit of unity, even if we can't see unity. The power of the spirit to overcome difference. I wanna begin by sharing something that I shared with my church on Sunday. It was a discussion rooted in the phrase, we are the ones we've been waiting for. I'm sure some of you have heard that. We are the ones we've been waiting for. Isn't that a beautiful phrase? I want you to think with me for a moment because in the human reality, we are all filled with different emotions. Some days we wake up and we are ready to seize the day engaging our responsibilities of caretaking and loving, being compassionate to others, being graceful and moving with mercy. And other days, I don't know about you, but some days getting up is a little bit slower than others. 
Some days I might feel a little bit of frustration going through my veins. Sometimes the difficulties meet me before I meet grace. In those moments, I become concerned because I don't feel like I'm one of the ones that I've been waiting for. I want to introduce you to a new idea. It's a phrase that it may not be grammatically sound, but it's a phrase that I say to my friends. Say, oh yeah, you are one of those ones. Or they might say it to me, oh, you're one of those ones. And it's a way to cut through the split thinking of some days feeling like I'm worthy of unity and other days feeling like I'm not so worthy. I don't have to be a particular way for a particular outcome to happen in my day. I don't have to earn the goodness of Kwanzaa. I just need to be one of those ones. There's a poet, her name is Lucille Clifton. And I felt that it was most appropriate to share these words as we begin to celebrate today. She wrote a poem and it's called, Won't You Celebrate With Me? Won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life? I had no model. Born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight my other hand. Come, celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. These words of Lucille Clifton remind me of the importance of family, community, nation, and our people. This is so important to me as I grow and have grown here in this city of Greensboro. It's quite a gift to grow up in a community where folks know your name. It's quite a gift to now have joined a wife, we have our home here, and to be settling into a space of life where Umoja becomes increasingly important. As we grow older, our experience begins to accumulate. And as the years go on, I feel even a bit of the pressure of narrowing relations. It seems like responsibilities grow and times shorten. It seems like the capacity to think and to do, move, and schedule seems to become smaller and smaller and smaller. But even when moments like that show up, there are celebrations like this that mean so much to me. These celebrations, much like family reunions, remind me that we still love one another, that we still care for the growth and the development of our youth and the care and the love for our elders. And whatever space you find yourself in between those experiences, you are one of those ones. No matter how you feel or you came in today, here's a gentle reminder. You are one of those ones. You're one of those that make up this moment which is full of different movements and rivers that sing and cry out our name and they say to us, remember, you are one of the ones. A year has gone by, it is December, and in the way that we measure our calendars, I'm sure you have experienced things this year that have been taking you to the highest of heights and sometimes, to be honest, we've been on the rough side of the mountain. Nonetheless, whatever you have experienced or gone through, I can assure you that somebody else in our great history has experienced that too. And just like the old TV show says, if you open up a book, you will find it there as well. In the spirit of Umoja, let me invite you 
to bring your whole year into this moment. Looking over the faces, looking over the names, looking over some of the memories and the reflections that are coming to you now. Not rushing to try to figure something out in this moment, but taking a deep breath with me. All is well. All is well because the things that you would have accounted for as a loss, the people that you would have accounted for as missing in your life right now, there is a way in the spirit and power of Emoja to connect yourself with them in this very moment. I want to share with you that in my younger years, I had challenges. And one particular time I found myself trying to fight and to speak for my own freedom in the court. In the court of law, I sat there in between two lawyers and there was discussions going back and forth about who was gonna come out on top, who was gonna be left behind. And in that challenging moment, I did not feel unity. I actually felt alone. You see, I stood with four of my friends in memory and in the spirit of the movement that you see behind me now. The spirit of the sit-in movement was about taking a stand and sitting down at the city council and saying that we can do better. The year 2010, speaking out for justice, speaking out for what we believe to be right in this very community of Greensboro. I looked over my shoulder and when I looked over my shoulder, I saw my whole community standing with me. Now you might say that this is something out of a civil rights book or what does this have to do with being connected in this moment to the spirit of Emoja? I just want you to know that all of the protests over the last three or four years, all of those that are speaking out and doing teach-ins and workshops, trying to figure out what do we do and where do we go from here? I just want to tell you, none of it has been in vain. Because when I looked over my shoulder, not only did I see my people, I saw my family. That is the first principle that I want to bring to us tonight, the unity of the family. When I looked over my shoulder and I saw my father, I began to feel a peace that was not given to me by this world. And I want you to think about it. It doesn't have to be in a court of justice. It could be actually on a field of sport or play. It could be in a classroom. It could be anywhere where you might feel isolated and apart from your community, but you just look over your shoulder and you see someone who loves you, who cares for you and has thought about you. And when you see them, you are connected and you are filled with the ancestral wisdom that everything is going to be okay. In the Umoja of family, we are often taught that we have to give strong words to our children so that they can brave a very harsh and violent world. I've heard that. I know what it's like to see young people go out into the world and you feel like you have to prepare them with harsh language and giving them a tough rod. But I want to encourage you today that the spirit of Umoja is one of deep and abiding love. One that prepares you for a harsh world by filling up your cup with the water, the wisdom, and the language of care that can only come from the root of family. When we think about how do we prepare the one of ones, if you want your people to be one, you don't want their skin to be so harsh and so thick that it gets so hard for them to come out of it at some point. So I say prepare the soil for the gentle seed so that it might grow with the sunlight and the water that it needs. I encourage you to see a young person and pat them on the back and say, I love you and you're doing a good job. Umoja sees an error or a mistake, and it says there is a better way. Umoja says, I see that there is a difference between me and you, but that is a reason why we complement one another versus rival one another. 
In the spirit of Umoja and nation building, we have some of the leading and most brilliant minds in this community. So anytime I hear the phrase that nothing's going on or nobody cares about that issue, nobody cares about those folks, I want you to take a moment because in the little parts all over this community, in different neighborhoods and schools, there are folks who are volunteering. There are folks who are spending their educational dollars to fulfill the needs of scholarship in this community, supporting one another. There are businesses growing right out of this black community and we are doing better than we think we are. I wanna lift these up in the spirit of Umoja because we can continue to grow and infuse love into every practice that we have. While not striving for perfection, we are striving to practice so we can grow in the midst of this process. When we're talking about the language, I want to share with you the language of diaspora, the language of our people who are all over this globe. I just wanna share, especially to my Aggies, Aggie pride, I have to share that with you all because I did go to North Carolina a and State University. The first time that I got to experience Kwanzaa. It was at North Carolina a and I remember joining and being a part of History Club. And as we began to read and debate and talk, learn from one another, learn from alumni and older elders, I began to experience a whole, a radical shift in my thinking and my consciousness. The opportunity to celebrate Kwanzaa with friends was new to me. Seeing the red, the black, the green, honoring the blood, the sweat, the tears, the beautiful blackness of our skin and the green land, which was rich with wealth and resource. Thinking about that and learning about the seven principles, learning about the history of celebration and realizing that this community of Greensboro lifted up Kwanzaa as a time for us to really get down and celebrate. And not only that, I realized that I was part of a unity that was bigger than I could know or even see at that moment. Now the language of unity in the diaspora means that I am larger than just say Greensboro, North Carolina. My history expands and goes way back to the coast and the western side of Africa and the various countries that are residing there. But I also want you to know this. Since I've had the opportunity to travel, I was walking up the boardwalk in Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. And as I walked down this boardwalk in my a and sweatshirt, I walked and I saw somebody and they were waving at me. And I waved at them. And the gentleman said, Aggie Pride. Now I said, I am thousands of miles away from Greensboro, North Carolina, walking on the coast of Salvador, Bahia, Brazil. And a man who looked to be about 40 years older than me screams out Aggie Pride. He crossed the street and as he got closer, he said, my name is Ray Adams. I'm class of 62. Nice to meet you. I just want you to know, I want you to begin to feel that our eyes, our bodies, our spirits are filled with so much energy. So when we line up with the principle of Umoja, we are never alone. We are not alone in the streets of Greensboro. We are not alone in distant countries, and we are certainly not alone when our loved ones, whom we care deeply about, that we carry in our spirit and lift up in this moment. Each of them that you're thinking about, unite with them. And if you will, take another deep breath with me. How can we invite other folks, other friends, that might be on the outside looking in. Write down the name of someone. Write them a letter. Fold it up and put it in an envelope, sharing with them some encouraging words. Put a stamp on it, take it down to the mailbox or the post office and send it to them. I would say to you, 
Remind somebody else that you are one of those ones and they are too. I lastly want to talk to you about the spirit and the language and the seriousness of community. As we think about Umoja, when we think about the sprawling histories that come together in this moment, and they say to us, remember where you come from. Remember you have somewhere that you are going. You are one of them ones. And when you sit with that phrase, and I hope that you can greet somebody tomorrow and say, are you one of them ones? Are you one of those ones? It takes away the need to try to be something other than who you are and created to be. Calm yourself. Have the peace of Umoja. The peace of Umoja sets the race for us to run. The spirit of Umoja lines up every other principle of Kwanzaa. If you have unity, you can have cooperation. If you have unity, you can have faith. If you have unity, you can have purpose. And when we celebrate each day of Kwanzaa, might you begin by remembering that you are one of them ones. I want to thank the Kwanzaa Collective. I want to thank the spirit and the guide and the voice of Mama Nia as I feel the embrace of love right now. I want to thank each and every note that was written, every meeting that was had to plan this set of evenings so that we as a community can continue to find the value in Umoja. That we find the value that once a year we celebrate these seven principles because we have started on a journey well before this moment, but we are contributing to the next set of footprints so that those that come after will know where to go. Umoja is here to stay. Umoja is here to live. Umoja is here to breathe. So as you take another deep breath with me, breathe in. Umoja and breathe out. Umoja. Might the spirit of our ancestors, our guides, and our loved ones convene in this moment to remind you, you are one of one. You are one of those. Ashe. Wesley Mars, was he not a dynamic speaker? I am so excited about this week's lineup of speakers. I want to invite you to come back tomorrow as we have two of the Greensboro Kwanzaa Collective's members speaking on the principle of Kujijakalia. See you tomorrow.